Barely a day after highly sensitive talks between the US and China, Joe Biden called China's leader a dictator. The US president made the remark about Xi Jinping off camera at a fundraiser. He also suggested, not for the first time, that Xi and other Chinese leaders were embarrassed when a Chinese spy balloon was blown off course over US airspace earlier this year. Oh boy. Joining me now, Lisa Daftari, editor, editor in chief of the Foreign Desk. Lisa always gets us boned up on all these things. <laughs> Lisa, people who don't understand China and Eastern ways of thinking, they don't fully grasp exactly why things like this are not small things. They're not exactly just tiny no. little headlines. They're big things, aren't they? Absolutely. And in this case, well, uh, critics have always said that the Biden administration does not understand the threat that is China, right? So all of a sudden we see Biden going hard on China, which is a wonderful thing, right? Except in this case, uh, when Blinken, uh, Secretary of State, just got back from a trip where he was so nice to the Chinese, he gave them a free pass on all their transgressions. He said the balloon won't happen again, so kind of excused that. And he said, when you're shipping fentanyl supplies over, you're probably shipping them by accident. I mean, it's crazy, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, but the, the, the point here is why this double talk coming from the administration, do they not compare notes? Do they not compare, you know, kind of approach or strategy in terms of what they're gonna do with China? On the one hand, he's calling them a dictator and his right-hand man, Blinken, is giving them a free pass on all their recent transgressions. Uh, how should we be handling it? And how is this going to be interpreted by Xi Jinping? How is he going to take all this? Well, they've already been expressing outrage and concern that the U.S. president would speak this way. This only tells me what an upper hand China feels like it has. And it absolutely does, because it understands uh, that the Biden administration is not taking them seriously and has not been putting pressure on them. Right. So all the provocations against Taiwan, all the provocations in the seas, all the warnings we've been getting from Japan and the Philippines, Vietnam, uh, South Korea. Uh, about China's behavior, uh, they've been marching on. Look at all of the, the evidence we have in our universities, in our labs, uh, having these uh, spies basically in New York City, having their own quote unquote uh, police department. It's not a police department, it's an intelligence gathering ring uh, and it hasn't been stopped. So they have managed to find a way to infiltrate all these important sectors um, of, of our lives and society and government uh, and have taken advantage of that copycat uh, technology, reverse technology, when they're you know taking all of all the things that we have and are proud of and, and really copying them at a fraction of the price, uh, mo moving closer and closer to Iran, Russia, et cetera, doing a lot of things that we're not happy about. So uh, the message from the White House should be stern, it should be firm, and more than anything, it should be consistent. So the Secretary of State and President are not saying conflicting things. Lisa, talk to me about this training facility in Cuba. I read something about this yesterday, and that doesn't seem good at all. Right. It's exactly, this is, look, if we connect all the dots, this is our our enemies, and I hate to say that, enemies. These are rogue regimes throughout the globe that have, in, in the last few years under the Biden administration, um, understood ways of evading U.S. sanctions, of evading any sort of, of kind of leadership uh, or any kind of um, demand for behavioral change coming from the United States and marching on. What they do is they find each other. They find trading partners. They're able to move on. The point of sanctions, economic isolation or isolation of any point is that it should be attached to some sort of behavioral uh, change. It should, be, it should be said that we are doing this because we want you to stop doing X, Y, and Z. So we have sanctions on Russia. We have sanctions uh, on Cuba. We have sanctions on Iran's regime. Um, we're trying to isolate China or at least deliver some sort of message to China. But yet these individual individual dictators and these entities have found a way to work together and they have teamed up and they are trading with one another and Iran is supplying drones to Russia and China is brokering deals in the Middle East and the list goes on. Uh, so it just it's just obvious that weak foreign policy leads to these kinds of conclusions. Are you tired of watching your beloved nation fall prey to the insidious grip of communism? Anti-Communist Manifesto by Jesse Kelly is the ultimate guide to fighting back against this destructive force. 
discover the shocking truth about communism infiltrating our education system, corporations, and even environmental movements. Unmask the true agenda behind groups like Antifa and Black Lives Matter and learn how to protect the United States from the most malicious enemy. With extensive documentation of past atrocities, you'll see the undeniable danger posed by this ideology. Arm yourself with knowledge and join the fight to preserve the American way of life. The Anti-Communist Manifesto, a new must-read book from Jesse Kelly. Get your copy today at jessekellybook.com or wherever books are sold.